Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa usalli wa usallimu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen, nabijina wa habibina wa qurrati a'yunina Muhammad ibn Abdillah, alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi afdalu salati wa atamu taslim amma ba'd. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector, and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this gathering and may He the Almighty bless each and every one of us and may He open the doors of goodness for all of us. Ameen. Inshallah, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on al ghadab We will be touching on anger. Anger is pretty much a natural feeling that I'm sure most of us have felt at some point or the other in our lives. It is a natural feeling, a healthy feeling, as long as it is kept under control. As long it is, as it is kept under control. For if, it, for, for if an individual were to lose control of anger, then that would result in devastating destruction in his own personal life, perhaps in his marriage, in his marital life, perhaps at home, in his family life, in business, amongst his friends, his friendships. So much of disaster can result in an individual's life if he were not to keep anger under control. And that is why we see, once a man goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the narration is in Bukhari, and he asks Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, advise me, Ya Rasulullah. The only piece of advice that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed him was, La taghdab. Do not become angry or do not get angry. Allahu Akbar. To which he replies, Ya Rasul, to which he repeats again, Ya Rasulullah, advise me. Faraddada mirara. He repeats it so many times, Ya Rasulullah, advise me. And each time he said, advise me, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Faqala la taghdab. Do not become angry. Do not let anger overpower you. Allahu Akbar. So many times, and this was the same thing that came from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another instance. Another narration where a man goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asks him, Ya Rasulullah, point out to me a deed that will lead me into Jannah. The narration goes along the lines of these words. Point out a deed that will lead me towards Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very beautifully states, La taghdab, along the lines of these words, La taghdab wa lakal Jannah, Allahu Akbar. Do not become angry, control your anger and Jannah is for you. Allahu Akbar. Because... A lot of harm comes about if an individual's heart becomes enveloped with anger. Anger is the root cause for jealousy, for envy, for hatred, for evil eye, and all these things. Allahu Akbar. Because the minute a person's heart is enveloped in anger, he becomes blind. He becomes blind and that heart begins to harden. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from that quality. In other words, may Allah the Almighty help us to keep that quality in control. Now anger is of two types. Anger is of two types. One is known as al ghadabul mahmud and al ghadabul madmoom. We have two types of anger. The first type is al ghadabul mahmud and that type of an anger is a praiseworthy type of anger. A praiseworthy type of anger. An anger that is encouraged and that anger is when an individual becomes angry 
when the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are transgressed. The minute the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are transgressed, we need to become angry. Perhaps the, the honor of Islam is violated, we need to become angry. The, 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 the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is violated, we need to become angry. This anger is a praiseworthy type of anger. This anger is an anger that has been encouraged. The other type of anger is known as al ghadabul madmum. It is a blameworthy type of anger. And that anger is for personal gains perhaps, or because an individual wants his opinion to reign over others' opinion. This anger is an anger which is a very selfish type of an anger. And that anger is blameworthy, and that anger is not encouraged at all. And that is the anger that we need to keep in check, and we need to keep under control. Let me share with you all a story, a very famous story that adorns the books of history to illustrate or to explain these two types of anger. This is one of the most famous of duels of duels that took place in the annals of history. And this was a duel between Ali radiallahu an and the, the, the giant of Arabia. He was known as the giant of Arabia. His name was Amr ibn Abd Wud. His name was Amr ibn Abd Wud. It was in the battle of Khandaq. It was in the battle of the trenches. It was in the battle of the trenches. The Muslim army had dug trenches around the front area of Medina guarding it. And then the Muslim, Muslim army had proceeded forward and the Kuffar had also approached. And now before the battle began very fiercely, there were a few skirmishes that took place, a few duels that took place before the, uh, the battle itself. And from these duels, one of them was between Ali radiallahu an and Amr ibn Abd Wud. Amr ibn Abd Wud was known as the giant of Arabia. He was a colossal figure. If he were to sit on top of a horse, it would be as if he was a, a giant, a towering giant. And even when he was off his horse, he was a giant that no one could reach up to. Everyone had to look up to him. He was such a colossal figure, Amr ibn Abd Wud. So he was of the Kuffar army, and both armies now met, and then Amr ibn Abd Wud cries out, I am the giant of Arabia. I am invincible. You know about my power. You know about my strength. I call forward the man who has courage to meet me. Now there were many fables and many tales about Amr ibn Abd Wood that he had the strength of 500 horsemen that he used to carry a cow and use the cow as a shield. You know, Arab imagination brought about so many tales that literally made him invincible amongst in front of the eyes of people. So the minute he comes out and cries for a challenge, everyone, there was pin drop silence. Everyone was looking towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he wants someone to come from the Muslim army. And now he starts, when, he's, when, he, when he recognized the fear that they had, he started taunting them. He started taunting them and saying, oh, so you're, all of you are women. There's no one to come forward and meet me. Now Ali radiallahu anhu could not bear this. He goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, permit me to go meet him in, 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 in a duel. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very quietly says, Ali, go and sit down. This is Amr. This is not a normal person. This is Amr. Go and sit down. Ali radiallahu anhu was a youngster, a young boy at that time. So Ali radiallahu anhu goes and sits down. He goes on taunting and now he starts to mock Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He started taunting Islam. He started taunting the Muslims. Ali radiallahu anhu could not take it for a second time. He goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, permit me to go meet him in a duel. Again, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed Ali radiallahu anhu, Ya Ali, calm down, go and sit down. Now a third time he cries out and now he's insulting and now because he thinks there's no one, he even starts to call Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a coward. Ali radiallahu anhu gets up for the third time. He goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw the glint in the eye of Ali radiallahu an, and he knew there is no stopping Ali anymore. He removed his turban, Allahu Akbar. He tied his turban upon Ali radiallahu anhu's head and he gave him his own sword, Allahu Akbar. And my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, that sword became a famous sword 
that was recorded in the annals of history and that sword has a name too. That sword is known as Zulfiqar. This was the sword of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he gave Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali radiallahu anhu now takes the sword and goes and meets Amr ibn Abdul. As they meet face to face, Ali radiallahu anhu, he says, Ya Amr, I know you are a man. When given two choices, you will accept one of the two choices. So I give you. So he asks him, okay, what are your two proposals? One, you embrace Islam and I leave you. Number two, you challenge me, I will fight you. To which he says, now because Ali radiallahu anhu was his uh, relative too. So he says, oh, the son of my brother, in other words, a nephew, a far nephew of his, I don't wish to fight you. Ali radiallahu anhu says, you may not wish to fight me, but you have come to fight the Muslims and I want to fight you. Allahu Akbar. And then what happens, that enrages the giant. He jumps off his horse and they both collide in a duel. A duel which was very fierce and very strong, but Ali radiallahu anhu defends himself and the duel progresses in such a way that finally Ali radiallahu anhu keeps the sword on the ground and tackles the giant and wrestles him to the ground. Allahu Akbar. Now the minute he was wrestled to the ground, the giant, he was thinking, this is a youngster, an upstart who has put me down. I'll just throw him and get back onto my feet. But Ali radiallahu anhu had him in a grip of steel. He tried to get up, but he could not break the grip of Ali radiallahu anhu. He was amazed, this youngster, how can he be so strong? His muscles were of steel. That was a description of Ali radiallahu anhu. He immediately flicks out his dagger, Ali radiallahu anhu, and he places it at the chin of the giant and he says, embrace Islam. Now the giant, he was known as the giant or the warrior of Arabia. He did not want to die a death, you know, which was a cowardly death. So he, he, he said, I'm ready to face death. I'm never going to embrace Islam. And then he collects as much as spittle in his mouth and he spits at Ali radiallahu anhu. And now the minute he did that, he thought he's about to slash my throat because I have angered him even further. So he was ready for that and he puts his chest forward. But then suddenly something amazing happens. Ali radiallahu anhu gets up, wipes his face and moves away and looks at him very solemnly. The giant says, aren't you going to kill me? Then Ali radiallahu anhu clarifies, all the while I was fighting with you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I was angered that you violated the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the honor of Islam. But now that you spat on my face, it becomes a personal vengeance. It is an anger, a personal anger, and I don't wish to fight you over a personal uh, anger between us. And he moves away. He turns and he walks back. The giant seizes the opportunity. He runs at Ali radiallahu anhu trying to hit him from behind. Ali radiallahu anhu in lightning reflexes, he jumps for his shield and then shields himself from that blow. And all that the Muslim army and the Kufar army, the, the, the only thing they saw was the sunlight glistening on the sword of Zulfiqar and suddenly the giant's head was rolling on the ground. Allahu Akbar. There was a blood spurting, the body swayed from one corner to the other. And then the body came crashing to the ground. Allahu Akbar. And the scholars of history mentioned, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, that the valley shook not because of the body crashing, not because of the body of the giant crashing, because of the Allahu Akbar of 2000 Muslim throats. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This story, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, highlights the difference between personal anger and anger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us control our anger. Let us not let anger control us and become a devastating fire that burns every single thing around us. Let us keep that quality because after all, anger is from the devil. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is reported to have said, Shaitan is made of fire. The narration goes along the lines of these words. And anger is from the devil. So so if you ever feel anger or if you ever feel angry, go immediately and make wudu. Go and make ablution because water, just as how water extinguishes fire, water will cool down your anger. So keep your anger at check and control your anger. For this is one of the advices Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave us that would secure an entry into Jannah and would also secure a peaceful life for us in this world as well as the hereafter. May Allah the Almighty forgive all of our sins and may He accept our good deeds. May He the Almighty help us to keep 
our anger in check. May he help us to control our anger. And may he unite us in the gardens of Jannah, just as how he united us here tonight with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhir da'wai an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullahu khayr. Donate now. Go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate and stay updated by joining our network's social links.